us can go through the slides for you. So we still can't hear you. Yeah. I don't know why, and I, again, I apologize because on my son's laptop, but what I'll do is um, I will just talk. I won't use the slides. So um, basically what I was saying, what you guys missed was um, we, um, we just recently merged with Tech Lauderdale. So um, a, lot of, a lot of you may notice that our name is slightly changed. So uh, Tech Lauderdale and Tech Hub merged to become South Florida Tech Hub. Um, and so now we uh, are Miami-Dade through Martin County. So Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, and Martin Counties. Um, and today, um, you know, obviously our mission statement being South Florida, building South Florida's tech hub, events like this are part of that. You know, we do a lot within the tech talent and workforce space. Um, Todd is actually one of our subcommittee chairs over the boot camps committee. Um, so events like these, if anybody has, you know, recommendations for other things that they'd like to see. I would love to hear from you guys, um, other you know workshops that you guys may be interested in and where we could help you most. Um, today, our workshop uh, or lunch and learn is assembling or putting a resume together for technology specifically. So um, Todd, and I won't do your whole intro, Todd is a found and lead instructor at Boca Code, um, who's gonna be our instructor or speaker today. And then we actually have, um, after the short workshop, we actually have a, uh, some people from Bid Select, City Furniture, and Crescent Solutions that we're going to introduce right after this um, that are going to sit on a panel so that you guys can ask some Q and A, um, and hopefully you know get some answers to your questions about how to make your resume better and hopefully connect you guys with some employers and find some jobs and keep you here in South Florida. So um, I, because I don't have my slides up, I'm not going to go through all of the events and everything. But um, for anybody that is looking to get more involved in the organization. We do have on average about two, maybe three, maybe three to five events every single week. So between virtual, hybrid, and in person, there's always something going on. Um, so for these, those of you that um, logged in early here uh, or attended this last night, maybe yourself, we had like our Tech Hub tee off that we do every January. We had like, what, I don't know, 130 people that showed up yesterday, which was awesome. So in person events like that to virtual workshops, community coffees, or panel discussions. We have our podcast. We have actually upcoming a Boca Tech happy hour, also sponsored by Boca Code, coming up on the third. So there's more than enough opportunities to get involved in the community. Um, and like Todd said, please feel free to reach out to him, myself, a lot of other people on the call. There's, uh, we're very welcoming community and happy to answer questions uh, if anybody would like to get more engaged. So I am going to pass it right over to you, Todd, because uh, I know we're about 10 after so that you've got time. Um, awesome. And when, anybody, I'll try to do my best to drop like information in chat as you talk as well. Great. And we're, um, I'm going to just share my screen here and jump in. And like, um, like Nikki said, I'm the founder and one of the lead instructors here at Boca Code. Um, and I'm going to just jump right into it. And one of the most important pieces of, one of the most important tips I can give you about your resume is the goal of your resume. A lot of people think that their resume is meant to help them get a job. And if you think of it that way, you're, you're actually going to do yourself a disservice. Um, that the goal, the goal of your resume is to get an interview, not a job. And so keep that in mind when you're building out your resume, right? You in and in that, and this is where, you know, and and so I'm gonna have certain opinions about resumes and I'm gonna try and be very clear that these are my opinions. And there's people on the call, like we invited Eric, um, for example, who has very different opinions than mine. And that's one of the reasons why we invited him. I like people, I want you to see different perspectives. In my opinion, you should leave certain details out of your resume because you want them to ask you questions and to bring you in and to fill in those gaps. If you answer every question, then why do they need to talk to you, right? So leave some questions. Um, but yes, your, your, your resume is designed to get you an interview, not a job. So keep that in mind. Um, now I'm going to go through 10 important, what I call, um, important resume tips. These are, these are my non-negotiables. These are, these are ones that, that, you know, I think are, are absolutely essential. And then I'm going to give you 10 more that I think are just as important, but sometimes you may not be able to do them. So starting off, number one, have the correct contact information. I've, 
I've actually received resumes from candidates before that I was really excited about and I went to, to call them and their phone number was wrong or I went to email them and their email was wrong. And that's it, right into the trash can, gone. Um, make sure that you include a, a personal email. You don't wanna use your business email address of your current employer or your last employer. You always wanna use a personal email, but it should be something professional sounding. So if, you know, when you were in middle school, you created some, you know, fun gamer sounding email address, you know, create a new email address that's professional, includes your name. Um, a lot of, you know, I'm lucky I have Todd Albert at Gmail as my personal email. Um, but, you know, if you're not so lucky, you might do something like, you know, Todd Albert developer at, you know, or something like that. Todd Albert tech at Gmail. Um, in your resume, the most important, the most relevant information, most important information that you want the hiring manager to know should be at the top. So you kind of organize, you know, like a top down kind of structure to a resume. So if you if you imagine if you send me your resume and imagine what if I only glance at the top third of your resume, you want the most important information there to grab me so that I want to read more and continue on. Also, when in terms of each section where you're going to list like your experience, your education, things like that, you want to do it chronologically from the most recent experience to the least recent. Um, spelling and grammar, absolute killer, especially in the tech field, because you might you might make like a quick typo. But for me as a software engineer, I don't want to hire somebody into into my organization that doesn't pay attention to details. Right. So it's not so much like, you know, being like a grammar Nazi, as, as some people call it. It's more that attention to details. I've literally seen people like misspell their own name, like in a typo on their resume. Um, something that I'm not always, but is actually one of my favorite words in the world is the word concise, because it has such a big meaning and such a small word. It essentially means to not be wordy. It also means to get the, right to the point and be, you know, in as, as few words as possible. Um, so make sure that when you're, you know, that you're not being overly verbose, overly wordy in, in, your, in all communications with your potential future employers. And it's just a good practice in general to keep things short. People are a lot more likely to read a two line email than a 20 page email. Um, make it easy to read. Make sure everything's lined up neatly, same font, consistent, like just smooth, easy to read, bold things you want that to pop out. Make it so that with a quick, quick glance, we can glance down the page, know where the sections are, get a quick glance of you without having to dig into all the details. Align everything to the left. Um, that should be self-explanatory. Um, it makes it easier to read than if the whole body of the, your resume is centered. Um, use things like bold, italics, and underline strategically different font sizes um, so that, you know, for example, in my experience section, um, I might bold the name of the company and italicize my position and underline the dates so that really quickly I can look down at all the bold and see, oh, what companies did he work for or she worked for? And in italics, look down and see, oh, what positions did that person have? And then quickly find the dates. Everything should stand out. So make it as clear, as organized, and easily differenti differentiable as possible. And finally, always, 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 and this is one that people never disagree with me on, always when you're sending your resume to a potential employer, send it as a PDF. Uh, I have people send me Word documents all the time. I don't actually have Microsoft Word. I don't use it. I don't have it on my computer. So when I open up their resume, the formatting is all messed up and it doesn't look, you know, they spend all this time making it look neat and then they send it to me and it looks like garbage. So always send PDFs. When you send someone a Word document, you're telling them here, I want you to edit this or here, help me edit this, please review this. So if you're sending like, you know, one of us, your resume to review, then that's a different story. But if you're sending someone your resume, at, you know, as part of an application to a job, always, 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 always send it as a PDF. 
So, so those 10 tips are like non-negotiable. You should do it 100% of the time. These next tips are just as important. These are just, these rules here, I won't even call them tips, I'll call them rules. These are just as important, but there are cases where you will and will not be able to apply these particular tips. So just as you can apply these. So the first one here is reread the job description twice. And this is kind of intentionally ambiguous. So you can read this sentence differently or the, this description differently. Like if you reread a job description, that's the second time you're reading it. And then you do that twice. So does that mean you're reading it three or four times? Well, either way, right? <laughs> either way is good. Um, but the, the, the point is read through it multiple times to make sure you're really addressing what is being asked. I say that this can't always be done because sometimes you know you meet somebody at an event like last night and they're like, hey, send me over your resume. There is no job description, right? So you might want to read into the company, see what types of positions they're hiring for, but you don't know what they're specifically asking you to hire um, to apply to. But for the most part, you know, you have a job description. And on this note, very often job descriptions are written to the like ideal unicorn gold standard amazing candidate. And they're like, oh, you have to have, you know, all of these skills and 45 years of React experience, even though React's only been around for seven years. And you need to have, you know, 20 years of JavaScript and, you know, like these crazy, 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 crazy requirements that might not be realistic. They're looking for this like perfect unicorn. Nobody's that perfect unicorn. If you meet some of those requirements or it sounds vaguely like you apply, right? Sometimes you might be the candidate they're really looking for. Um, your cover letter should be extremely short. It should be highly directed. And I recommend making your cover letter exactly three sentences. And this usually blows people away. I was, I have often written extremely long cover letters in the past and never heard anything back. And I'm like, man, I poured my whole heart and soul into that cover letter. You know, you guys know those cover letters. Ever since I was seven years old, dot, 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 dot. And it's a two page essay, blah, blah, blah. And nobody likes those. They'd rather you do three sentences, four max. And I'll tell you that what those, what those three or four sentences are. The first sentence is why you want to work at their company. What specifically about that company is attracting you? Number two is what is it about you that makes an extraordinary fit? And don't go and reiterate everything that they can already read in your resume, but something special that maybe they can't see in your resume. Um, and then number three is tell them you look forward to meeting them and working at their company. And that's it. I'd Nikki, I'd really love to come and work with you at Tech Hub because what you're doing is impacting the entirety of South Florida and you're having such a tremendous impact on the economy. Sent, that was sentence one. Sentence two, I think I would be such a great fit because I'm you know, great at networking. I'm deeply into um, enmeshed in the whole tech community and I think I could make a really big impact. Sentence three, I can't wait to, to you know, meet you in an interview and start working at your company. And that's it. Optional fourth is if there's something that you feel is worth mentioning specifically about this job and you, like, oh, and by the way, you and I have met before, blah, 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 blah. Or, you know, I know that you know, if there's something that might keep them from hiring you or something that they should know about you before considering your application, there could be an optional fourth sentence, but keep it super, super short. A lot of people, I, I try not to tell too many people this secret formula because it's like magic. Um, people who've been trying for years to get jobs, I tell them this and they come back to me like a month later and they're like, Todd, I sent two, two cover letters. I got two interviews and I got, you know, I already got a job. Um, it's really pretty magical. Um, number three. Oh, and why is it that this is like, you can't always do it because sometimes you can't include a cover letter. Sometimes you don't know what company you're applying to. Like 
if you're working with a recruiter, you might just have to give them a generic cover letter. Um, so that's a different story. But when you can, tailor your resume and cover letter specifically to the job or company. So obviously the cover letter I just went through, but there's certain times in your resume, like I have, I worked at a bowling alley when I was 17 years old for one week. I don't put that on my resume. It's completely, completely has nothing to do with what I'm doing. But if I was applying for a job where I was going to build an app for a bowling company, I might mention that, right? So you can tailor your resume specifically to the job you're applying, applying for. Um, a lot of people wonder if they put, um, if you should put your um, address on your resume. And I think that if you're applying for a job that's local, it's not a bad thing. If I'm applying for a job in Boca and I live in Boca, it's not bad to put my address on so they see like, oh, wow, this person's around the corner. I could bring them in for an interview right now. Um, they're never going to have a problem getting to work, right? Um, if you live all the way across the country, you might leave it off because maybe it's not as relevant or maybe you don't want them to realize the, how far away you are. So it's kind of, you know, I know it's a little bit of a non-answer, but I think if you're close, definitely put it. Um, if you're in the same county, you know, maybe just put the city. Um, if you're really far away, maybe just leave it off. Oops. Um, name drop. What do I mean by this? Uh, I've, I've had, you know, a lot of, in my career, I've had a very long and fairly illustrious career. So I've gotten to work with some really incredible companies, clients, um, you know, I did work for NASA and among other places. Sometimes if you can include some, you know, one or two of those big names in your resume, that's good. Don't try and pack it full, but maybe try and drop one or two impressive names in there and then leave the rest for the interview, right? So you don't want to put every, like, you know, drop your entire, you know, every name you've ever worked for. Um, but one or two is really good to have. Um, only include relevant experience. So like I said, when I worked for a bowling alley at 17 for a week, totally un, completely irrelevant to my career now, right? Um, so as you, as you progress in your career, some of those older experiences should be dropping off, right? And as the newer, more relevant experiences take precedence in your resume. If you are a software engineer or doing anything with coding, you should be contributing to GitHub. Even if your repos are private, you can actually, in your contribution settings, allow it to show um, in your get your um, contribution uh, calendar, which is like the green squares at the bottom here. Um, you should be able to show your private contributions. Try and make projects that you have that you can public so people can actually go in and see your code. This really, this slide here really only applies to, you know, coders, software engineers, programmers. Um, do a lot of small little projects that show that, you know, it's easy for somebody to look at a small project that does one thing and see that you know how to do that. So a lot of projects, a lot of small projects uh, is definitely preferable and keep your GitHub clean and updated. Um, people look at it. Sometimes in your resume, it's good to just include one interesting like fact that makes you a human, especially for us in tech. You know, my resume, it's like, you know, professor, 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 software engineer, software engineer, software engineer, um, you know, grant, 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 publication, publication. And some people like think, oh, God, this guy like, you know, ivory tower or whatever. So I used to include often in my resume that, you know, under awards, I would include, you know, second place in disc golf tournament, you know, in the year. So it's like, oh, this guy's actually a human being. He knows how to throw a Frisbee, you know? And so you don't want to load your resume up with that stuff, but having, you know, one or two interesting facts about you that kind of make you an actual human being, that you do things outside your job. I talked to, to um, interviewers all the time. In fact, every few months we have a career fair here at Boca Code in person and I talk to the interviewers and some of them will say, you know, I, man, I asked your students all these questions and they told me all about them as a software engineer, as how they code. 
but I had to dig and dig and dig to find out about them as a human. You know, I had one person say he had to ask one of my students 17 questions before he found out that they both volunteered for the same organization. He's like, that should have come out right away. Shouldn't have taken me 17 questions. So don't forget to also show that you're a human and that you're you're not just somebody that can do the job, but somebody that they're gonna actually wanna like maybe have lunch with, right? Maybe talk to in the break room. So make sure you also try and come off as human. And then this question, this, this slide here, some of us have, you know, I've looked at resumes where I, there was something really startling about the resume, something really obvious. Um, for example, um, a woman that I was interviewing, she had like, this incredible resume. She looked amazing on paper. And then she had this like six year gap where there was nothing on her resume. And, you know, I, of course I asked, you know, and it wasn't really like a super relevant question, but it was an obvious question. Of course I was going to ask that. And she completely fumbled the answer, had nothing prepared to say. And in fact, she was told by people who were advising her not to answer that question instead of being told how to answer that question or how she can answer that question in a way that was honest, but actually, you know, intrigued me to the point where, oh, I want to bring her in for a second interview. So if she said something like, well, I was working, um, you know, and paying taxes, but I don't really want to say what I was doing, but, you know, maybe, maybe when I meet you again for the next interview, I'll, I'll give you more, more details. Well, now I'm curious. Now I want to bring her in for another interview. So instead she, she fumbled and she, she really got really uncomfortable and, you know, and, and turned me off from wanting to, wanting to potentially hire her. So if you have something, you know, um, you know, some of us have gotten in trouble in the past, you know, maybe we were arrested, maybe, you know, whatever it was, something in our, in our history, just have a plan. How are you going to talk about that? What are you going to say if somebody asks? Um, and finally, when you name your resume, make sure to name it something that I'm going to be able to differentiate. Like if you just name it resume, I get a hundred resumes. I'm going to have resume one, resume two, resume three. I don't know where, which one is yours. So I always include my last name, even though I don't really use my last name, I go by Todd. Everyone knows me as Todd. But for somebody who's interviewing me, they're gonna look for Albert. So I'm gonna put Albert underscore Todd underscore resume in the year so that they can easily find it, know when it was last updated. You know, so if they dig this up on their, you know, in their in a folder and it's like five years old, they might reach out to me to ask for a new one. So I always include the date. I always include my name um, so they don't have to look through resume, 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 resume. Um, real quick, the sections, always have your name and contact info. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. I'm assuming you can. Name and contact info right at the top. Then right after that should either be your professional experience if you've worked in the field or your education if you are looking for your first job and you don't have a lot of relevant professional experience. Whichever one of these is more relevant, if I, like for me, I have very relevant professional experience, so that comes first, then education. If you just finished a degree or just graduated from a boot camp, then you flip that and you show, hey, look, I just finished at, you know, a degree at FIU, or I just graduated from Boca Code, you put that first and then like you show your professional experience after that. What did you do before that? Um, and then there's different sections you can include depending on who or what you are and what you're doing. Awards and certifications um, is what you know I like to include next. And then for me, I have publications next because I've been published a lot. Um, for you, if you I recommend a lot of you start writing articles for like, like even on Medium, just post articles on Medium and then you can list those articles here, right? So you can have publications too. You don't have to be a scientist in peer reviewed journals, right? You can also, if you're brand new and you know you just graduated from you know, a bootcamp or something, you could list your skills. Oh, I do React, React Native, JavaScript, Python, whatever. Also languages you speak. Um, sometimes it's useful to have people that are multilingual. 
So put that, you could even, you don't have to put necessarily how well you speak the language. So real quick, the great debate, um, you know, someone like Eric, he loves, he wants to hear like, for each job, sentences of what you did and, you know, what were your key accomplishments at each job? Definitely things that you can quantify. Um, for me, I just want, where'd you, where'd you work? Where'd you work? Where'd you work? Where'd you work? Super concise. And so the, the question is, how do you please, how do you please Eric who wants all the details and me who doesn't want to read all that? So can you please both is the question. So here's an example of a resume that a friend of mine had when he was applying for um, a job at City Furniture, which he then later got um, as a data engineer. And I like the design of this where, you know, right away you can look down and see PGA, ModMed, IronHack. You could see data engineer, data engineer intern, lead teaching assistant. You could see the dates. It's all really clear because they're different fonts and they're organized. But all this text, I call this stuff that even your mom won't read. Um, you know, and this is where, you know, Eric and, you know, maybe Sasha and, and, um, and Mike might disagree with me a little bit um, or a lot of it. And that's cool. That's I want to have that discussion. Um, it is good to have those on there so people get a sense of what you did. Um, I would like to see it more like this, but I'm on the extreme end, right? I know that, and I'm telling you that. This is a little bit extreme on the other way. So a good compromise, I think, is putting what I like and then putting keywords or key, um, uh, like, like um, accomplishments that you did at each one. But my point is try and keep this bulleted, try and keep this simple, try and stick to keywords. Um, we'll have a little bit of a discussion about that, I'm sure, after. Because um, like I said, you know, Eric will take you in the other direction. I'm more like, keep it simple. It'd be interesting to see where Mike and Sasha fall in the discussion. So my, my resume is actually more what you call a curricula vita. So it's just, it's, there is no what, you know, fluff. There is no descriptions. It's just job experience, education, right? Everything is just listed. There's no details. Um, of course, I have a long career. I have a lot of experience. Not, you know, somebody just starting out might not be able to do this. So you might want to fill in with some of, you know, some of the more details. Um, but make sure updated contact information, either education or experience first, whichever is more relevant. And then you can have like awards, publications. Um, try not to include any fluff or be redundant. Try not to have too, too wordy of a descriptions. If you do make them concise, consider also adding languages like, you know, to speak Spanish, Portuguese, um, skills like React, AWS, et cetera. And that's it. Now we can, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing there and hopefully we can add uh, Sasha and Mike and Eric up here on the spotlight and, and do a little, I don't know if Nikki, do you wanna introduce them or want me to? Um, I was actually gonna let them introduce themselves. I mean, if you prefer to introduce them, I, I figured they could give a quick, quick uh, intro of what they do. Let me see if I can get everybody sure, well, I'll do start. It. <laughs> Can you hear I'll me up? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, um, my name is Sasha Rodriguez. I'm the talent acquisition supervisor here at City Furniture. Um, been with the company for almost four years um, and have talent acquisition experience here in South Florida for over 15 years. So I've been looking at resumes for a very long time. Great, fe great feedback on that, Todd. Um, and I'd love to, like the accomplishments are actually my favorite to add in there, not just the experience. I know you're bold there with just listing there, but at least the accomplishments uh, from the talent acquisition side, but we can get into that later. <laughs> I guess I'll go. Um, my name is Mike Conway. I'm a chief technology officer for uh, BidTelect. We're a digital advertising uh, platform. I've been in the business uh, in technology and technology management since the early 90s. So I've gone through my fair share of resumes and, and uh, understand what works for me and what doesn't. Um, so Todd and I will have some disagreement and I'm sure in some of these questions, uh, but um, glad to be here. 
Uh, Eric Bomagin with Crescent Solutions. Uh, been in staffing for almost seven years now. Uh, we work on a lot of different things, including IT. So we kind of see a, a different gambit of all types of talent. Um, definitely agree with a lot of things that Todd had to say. And then, you know, he, he brought my name up because me and him have had this conversation a couple of times. Um, but once again, it's not to get the job. It's a tool to get you onto the next steps of your career. So definitely really excited to talk about more than just the resume, but everything that we're trying to accomplish with helping people out too. Yeah, I Thank just a couple key words that you said there, Eric, are, yeah, it's a job. A lot of uh, leaders are looking for associates to, or um, I guess employees to build a career. So yeah. building your resume for that career, not just a job. Exactly. I, um, so I don't know, uh, Todd, how you want to go about this. I figured that, um, maybe first taking any questions, if there was an immediate questions from anybody uh, in the audience. And then I have a few bullet points that I wrote down uh, for everybody too, but maybe we'll start with if there's any immediate questions. Yeah, just a couple quick quick comments. There's a there's already a question, two questions in chat, which is awesome. Um, just wanna mention that Nikki kind of recused, her, recused herself from being on this panel, but she also has a lot of experience in this, uh, in this field. Um, but you know, we, we put Nikki and I picked some of our favorite people. In yeah, this, I, uh, I will give you guys all the limelight, but I'm definitely here, um, as a past hiring manager and a recruiter, both in technology and in healthcare myself. So I'm happy to be yeah, a so, so I'm happy to, I'm happy to act more in a, as a moderator, but let everybody else, um, you know, since I, I, I had the floor for a while. So I'm gonna post, um, Jonathan Jimenez has two questions. He says, um, well, I'm gonna actually do a second one first, but it's a little two-parter. How do we get through resume filter bots? And how would the tips vary if you're applying for FANG companies? So great questions, Jonathan. And um, yeah, Eric, Mike, or Sasha, if you want any. Uh, can you repeat that? I, I'm sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties and can't see the screen. Um, so yeah. yeah, yeah, we lost we lost you too. We only see city for we lost your face, um, but we can hear you fine. So the the questions are um, oh there's your face. The I, questions I just are can't see. <laughs> um, how do we get through resume filter bots? That's a really important question I think for a lot of people. And then also, how do these tips that we gave vary if you're applying to fame companies? So, um, you know, I would say my my tips in terms of getting through getting to fame companies or resume filters wouldn't change. I would I would keep my tips the same, but I know you all have you know, other opinions. I want I want you guys to share. Well, I think you um, you address this is ensuring that you review the job description before applying. Uh, with the keywords on there, uh, because that's you know going to be the filter. But um, in, in our in our team, we are physically reviewing resumes, looking for those keywords, looking for the accomplishments and tenure. Um, we also want to pay attention to a lot of the applications lately have pre-screeners. So those screeners are to either knock you out of qualifying or knock you in of qualifying. So pay attention to those key screeners. And, and Sasha, how, uh, just on average about how many resumes do you think you get for a single job? Oh, that's hard. Uh, it, it, it depends. Um, it, it depends on the position. I do see some like on the infrastructure side get a lot more volume than we do on the development side. And analytics will have a higher volume, but I don't have um, the exact data for you. Fair enough. Mike, um, I'd like to address the second one, Todd, the, as far as what tips would vary on the thing. And there's really not much. One of the, one of the keys that, that, you know, Facebook, Amazon, and, and, and the alphabet, um, look for is not only the technical skills, uh, but they want you to show 
um, past projects and, and and detail on. So not just your Git, but the, the to quantify what you've done um, for market improvements, right? So the other things I know that that Facebook looks for or Meta now, and and I know that Apple is they don't look for just hard skills. They also want to look for for you to quantify your soft skills as far as um, independent working as well as in a team because you know most of the projects in all of the fang it's it's so large of a company are are team projects right um so so i know i have uh, very high hiring managers at apple and i know that that's a that's a key uh, to to at least how he he sifts through the resumes i'm gonna say it's kind of really tough to get through that aspect, you know, like the, the HR black hole or the red tape that people talk about. Um, your network is going to be a huge tool. So reaching out to people that are at those companies that you can connect with beforehand are, are going to be the people that would be capable of doing that for you within the company. Um, so it's a step in the right direction because you're already kind of bypassing a computer looking at a control F and having a relationship do more work for you than your resume just doing it for you. Yeah, and right on that note, that takes us perfect segue into our next question. Zachary Mike asked, is Todd, there any- can I actually add something really quick before you go on to the next? No, Nikki, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I was waiting for everybody to go first. So I did see this once and I thought it was the most awesome thing I've ever seen. Um, so I personally love to look, like when I was doing staffing, I personally love to look through the resumes myself and I was reading them. But um, for those that are going through uh, bots and filters, um, I did see one resume that I thought was amazing, was, um, was actually really smart. So he had, he was younger, junior, didn't have a super long resume, but wanted to be able to fit in a bunch of the extra like languages and soft skills, but didn't want to put all that quote unquote like fluff in the resume to make it look, you know, too messy. So what he actually did is obviously because most resumes are on white with black text. So what he did is he actually on the second half of the resume, he made all of the text. He put all of the fluff, all the soft skills, all the languages, all the crap that typically you don't want to see, but you still kind of want to have in there. All he did was change the text to white. So if somebody's looking at it, you can't see it, but the bots are still picking it up. So just wanted to put that as a tip because Never if heard still of that. There, that might be a good way to do it too, because I, I thought it was pretty smart. Pretty cool. But that was interesting. All. Tip. <laughs> I, tip. It sounds a little black hat to me, but um, the interesting nonetheless. Um, so, Eric, on the on the note that you were just saying, in terms of like you know getting past the filters and trying to get to a human, Zachary Mike asked um, if you ha we have any advice on who to address the cover letter to if we don't know the name or information of, on the hiring managers? I'd like to take this because um, with your cover letter aspect, it, it's great, but it also isn't always going to be utilized. Um, so instead of doing a cover letter, using an objective and have that be the first thing that they see. So, you know, you want a small cover letter. I certain times like that big cover letter when I'm working on specific permanent positions to truly show that. But when they have an objective, it covers that three sentence thing. So it can go out to everyone in all the positions they're, they're applying to. And you can make it your resume cover both and have it be to specific companies as you're sending it out. So uh, to, to Mike, what do you think? Well, uh, to, to Eric's point, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll plead the fifth. But if I was I was completely honest, I don't think I actually particularly pay attention to the, to the cover letters. I'm getting right to the meat and, uh, you know, to, to your point earlier, the first thing I do is scan for presentation. If it looks like it's not going to be readable, it goes in the thing, right? And the second thing I look for is spelling and grammar, because as a technical person, you need to pay attention to details, right? You know, one letter off a variable name, all of a sudden your code doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, and then I look at relevant qualifications and, and move forward. But uh, it, to be quite honest, for me, the cover letter is is less of an importance of making sure that you are are, are meeting the you know I, I agree with your original ten tips. Um, it's really important and and looking at those red flags first and and really ignoring the cover letter. 
I, 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 was with you on, I always ignored them. Yeah, the like cover letters, I never really used that much unless it was super short. So like to Todd's yeah. point, if somebody had a really, really short, concise cover letter, I might read it. But if I get a whole page cover letter, I literally would just put it to side and look at the resume. Yeah. I agree. It actually helps a lot with the um, junior level tech um, candidates or it just kind of stands out, tells a little bit about yourself and your personality and how you're going to fit culturally with the short brief um, cover letter on an entry level candidate. More tenured candidates may have um, long 10 page offer um, cover letters like Todd's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how great of a tip this is for tech. I mean, you guys probably, you know, Mike and Todd may have a, a better wording for it, but I, I know because me, I've always been typically in like sales and marketing roles. So I know in my cover letter, I always kept it same thing about two to three sentences. What I did is I, at least on mine, um, I used to bold my very first sentence. And I literally said, do you want to increase your production and revenue by 150%? And then I would say, this is how I'm going to do it. And of course, that was how I would if I was applying to a specific company, but I would bold that because I feel like that would catch people's attention. But yeah, I think in general, a lot of people put it to side because they're typically very generic. So, you know, on back to, to this question in terms of who to address the cover letter to, um, some of, you know, we've gotten, we've, we have a lot of speakers come here to Boca Code and give our students a lot of advice. And one of our, one of our um, guest speakers really suggested like when you research the company on LinkedIn, find out who is doing the hiring if you can, you know, look and see who posted that original post, um, you know, search and do some research and then reach out to that person. Now, sometimes, you know, people don't like Sasha, for example, at City Furniture, she is so freaking busy. This woman does not have time to breathe. And maybe it might not be, you know, you might not get anywhere trying to reach out to her for a job that she has another recruiter at City Furniture that's handling. But it, you know, so you can maybe get a foot in the door with some companies by reaching out to a specific person. You know, maybe somebody at, at Bid Tellect is is hiring for a position, but you reach out and you find Mike and you asked him, you know, you, you asked him to look at your resume and maybe he's going to hand that resume to that person say, here, this came through and, you know, take a look. So it, it sometimes can help. I don't think it can hurt because like if you send Sasha your resume and she doesn't have time, she might just ignore it. But, and I'm not trying to pick on you, Sasha. I just know you're super okay. busy. <laughs> um, but, you know, if, if you apply through the regular channels and maybe try and also find the hiring manager and find out who that is, that's, you know, Zachary, that would be my my advice on that. Agree. I think, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I just, I yep. don't know, I can't yeah. see anyone yeah. still. So, um, <laughs> so weird. Um, I, I was think, shaking my head and then remembered that you can't see me. So I said, yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> I agree. I, I agree with you on, on you know, sending it, if you're sending it to a busy leader, um, you even just getting it down to an associate level might help get you escalated up. If it's coming from one of my top pro producers, I may pay attention to that email. It, it'll go, go on the top of my priority. So if you don't get that response from those leaders, go to an associate. They may be able to help you. Even check your LinkedIn and see who you might be connected to that actually works with the company you want to work for. And that's where you can actually do a name drop. Here at City, we a lot of our hires are associate referrals. They actually um, we kind of see them as VIP. Um, so if uh, you know um, one of our in-house uh, technical you know developers decide to refer someone, I'm calling that person first over someone who's coming from the mm -hmm. outside without a referral. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, sure. I, I have a question for you, for all three of you actually on, on resumes because it comes to the concise side of it. When I don't see month and year, it really frustrates me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I feel like that breaks, you know, puts you in a already not knowing how long they've been somewhere. You know, you see the same year and it could be nine months or it could be two days. Um, and, and that's probably one of the big things that I always look for and, and get a little it's heard when I'm reading. Right. I think, I think Eric, if you're somewhere for like years and you put like, I was there from 2011 to 2019, the months don't matter. 
right? Yeah. But if you're like, yeah. I was there from 2011 to 2012, it could be two months. It could be two years, right? Yes. So at that point, right? If it's but, a long period, it doesn't matter. If it's short, it does. You're absolutely right. Yeah, but, but yeah for the more, ser- more senior people, that to me, that's critically important because, you know, one of my red flags is job hopping, right? Mm-hmm. To go back to Ashley's point, I'm not looking for somebody that actually wants a job. I want somebody that actually wants to build a career with our company to actually provide value. So I do look at those dates. And if somebody's at a company for for nine months or, or 14 months at a, at a whack, unless he was part of a consulting firm that that's what the gigs were, that he can explain, that, then it's a red flag for me from as yeah. a hiring manager. Yeah. Um, on that note, Gio asked um, what, he w- what you would do to answer about a six month gap in work history. And I think we'd probably all agree that a six month gap is not a gap in work history. Do you guys agree? <laughs> yes and no. I mean, it depends I, yeah, on why. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I would want, you know, you got to understand your own truth and be able to, to tell what it is. Um, you know, honesty is going to be the best way, but you know, there's, there's things that happen and you should be able to explain them. I think honesty is going to be the healthiest version. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I wrote, uh, I read Gio's comment, like, honestly, I mean, obviously not in that exact wording, but almost exactly what you wrote. I would just put that in the resume, like, you know, underneath that time frame, just bullet point, Hey, this is what I was doing, blah, 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 because it shows that you were bettering yourself. I mean, returning to college, you know, starting a web development class, those are all positive things towards your career. So you're still working. It's just, you're going to school, you know? Yeah. And, and- I'm not, everybody's going to have, you know, a different reason. So it may not be the same reason that, as, as he just stated in his question. Um, mm-hmm. But listen, we've all gone through two years of the pandemic, right? And even without the pandemic, people have had personal situations where they were forced to either take care of a parent or something that, that's come up. You just need to be honest and, 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 and to be able to explain that. Um, mm-hmm. And most hiring managers you know, will look right past that. As long as you're, you're up front and, and to Todd's point, right? When somebody struggles to answer the question, then a flag goes up and says, oh, something yeah. that's not right. Right. But if they just came out and said, well, I did this because I, you know, of these reasons, then, then for me, it would, it would take that flag right down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I think awesome. one of the things that, that really does help is this is an employee market right now, you know, like the, the, they're calling it the, you know, the great resignation. I'm seeing it as a unification of the workforce. People are willing to, you know, wait to take a job that they truthfully want compared to just, you know, they want to, everybody wants to build their career, not just take a job anymore. And that's yeah. a big difference. I, I, I could, I could classify it as distant ones. It's almost like the great pickoff because there's, there's some <laughs> workers out there that just have a reputation that are just getting job offers without even interview. Yeah. It's, oh it's yeah. A, it's a re- weird dynamic right now. It's, it's, it's fun, but it is, there's a lot of different things, moving parts within it. Um, yeah. And your resume is just one of those parts. Your network will help you get it. Knowing yeah. the right person, going to events. You know, I'm sure people, like you said, probably got their resumes out to, to people yesterday. You know, yeah. like. So we have we have five minutes left, and we have I have two we have two questions that I want I want to try and answer, and then I want to leave I want to leave a couple uh, you know a minute just for each of you to give uh, some you know closing thoughts, um, and then if Nikki wants to close us off. So Kate asked if our advice would be different if for a job that requires a cover letter, I'd right away say, no, my, I require a cover letter for my jobs and I'd rather see a three sentence cover letter or two sentences <laughs> than, than two pages, 100%. What about you guys? Same. Yeah, I, I concur. Yeah. I, I, I don't it's feel simple. like I'm on a different side of the boat where I'm searching you after are. people. So it's, it, it's a different view for me. I can say that much. And then um, Steve asked um, if, if we have any suggestions for somebody like him who's transitioning from fields with a lot of indirectly related skills. So Steve comes from a background of sound engineering and he's going into software engineering. And I think there are a lot of interesting parallels. And like as somebody, you know, a hiring manager in that field, I would, I would I see somebody who's a former engineer looking to go into a different side of engineering. And I think, you know, wow, he's going to have a lot of transferable skills. But do you guys have any specific suggestions for somebody like that? I think for me, I, I, I see this quite a bit where people are trying to break into to software from, from other disciplines. 
I, I think it's just being able to quantify what those skills are and, and to be able to write and, and to say, and it's not just the, the language or the, or, the, or the frameworks that, you know, because if, if they're breaking in, they're learning that on their own, but there's also, how, how do you, how do you uh, show and, and, and show those quantifiable skills of how to use critical thinking? Right and how you you know how you work with data right no matter if you're a sound engineer you're, or no matter what engineering you're working with data how do you mine through that data and what have you done to to improve um, what you're working on right and and those are like quantifiable things that you can pick up pick out from any discipline and really apply it to software engineering or or a tech job yeah. I agree, Mike. I, I act just as you were talking, I'm actually thinking of like example as myself. I mean, my entire career was healthcare and then I completely just cold turkey went to tech. So what I did with my resume is I put I actually, so this is actually one of my bullet points when you were talking that I was thinking I wanted to bring up when you were talking, Todd, was um, I actually have for my resume, I think that if you have really good um, skills and they could be technical or they could be soft skills, but I actually on my resume prefer to see skills at the top versus like all the education and all of that. Because for me, at least when I was, you know, doing recruiting and on the business development side and trying to sell, you know, these uh, candidates uh, to my clients, they didn't care. I mean, unless it's a super impressive company, they don't care where you worked. They care what you were doing and the difference you were making at the company and what you were building and the projects you were involved in and like the accomplishments you had while you were there, like to Sasha's point. So actually, my resume I actually have all my skills at the top. And then I have education and where I worked. Um, so just when that question came up, that's immediately what I was thinking is there's probably a lot of transferable skills there. Maybe you're just not looking at them as transferable because you're looking at them directly with your job, but I'm sure there's a ton there, including soft skills mm -hmm. that you could, you could highlight. I'm going to add, there's probably more jobs than there are people. So if you're trying to get into this field, people are going to be excited. You know, somebody's going to be more than excited to be talking to you if you have the, those transferable skills. And then the other thing is, you know, I talk to, you know, people within the military who are trying to make this transition into just, you know, back, back into what is the normal job market. And that's where, yeah, why, why wouldn't you want somebody who can do the job, do the job well and become passionate about it? So mm -hmm. I think transferable skills are, are just as important as hard skills if you're bringing that to the table. Sure. So Sasha, any last uh, thoughts before we go? Um, no, honestly, I don't have any final thoughts. I think, I think you did an amazing job with that presentation. Um, and just the, the key points on, um, you know, keeping it clean. Um, I think just also being okay with kind of getting out of that comfort zone of the traditional, um, submit your resume and pray, pray for the best. It's okay to dig a little deep and ask questions and, and that persistence actually is um, appreciated, um, especially with a, a talent acquisition as a whole, they're so busy, but if they see the same name maybe twice or three times, you're gonna get called. So um, great tips and great uh, presentation, Todd and team. Yeah, I agree that, you know, when I've never, when I've, when I've been interviewing people, I've never been interested in somebody who wasn't passionate about wanting to come work with with me at my, at my company with that job and somebody who's like following up and trying to know like that shows they're excited and they really want to work and you know that goes a long way mike any last tips i guess the only thing we really didn't talk about is that, you know whether you're a junior or whether you're a mid-level or senior what i'd like to see is actually a reference to personal projects right just and, and you know what enlist your externships internships or any freelance work you've done what it shows is passion for what you do right and it's not you're not just doing it as a job you're not just doing it as an afterthought it, it shows me that right. that you have initiative and you want to move move your career forward so i, I do look for that on, on resumes as well and you don't have to be a senior level person to have those, right? You can be somebody that's that's just coming out of school or coming out of book of code that they've worked on that they're proud of. Um, and I, I think like that's to, that, that's a that's a good trigger for me. We like to recommend that if you're if you're job hunting, you should be spending one third of your time working on personal projects, like Mike said, one third of your time 
networking, like Sasha said, and one third of your time applying for jobs and actually going and doing the interviews, you know. So thank you guys, Eric, Sasha, Mike, you guys are amazing. Beth, you're always incredible and we love watching you and having you. And Nikki, you're amazing. Any, any closing thoughts for us, Nikki? No, I think this was wonderful. Um, I, I've always liked your, your resume workshops, Todd. So um, the only closing thoughts I had that we didn't bring up was, um, I think to your point, Sasha, earlier about the accomplishments, I personally do love that too. But I think just to write down the, what you accomplished, not how because I've seen people literally write out, I did this blah, 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 and the whole thing, just write what you did so that you've got something left to talk about in the interview of how you did it. But that's the only thing 100%. I was gonna add. <laughs> yeah, I, I increased the sales 150% period. And then I just left it at that. And then they're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and you know, just I just wanna leave one thing where th this is just one part of the process when, when it comes to your resume. So like understanding your worth, understanding what you want in your career and knowing how to market yourself those are going to be the, the big steps of going through after you have your resume to get your career, you know, where you want it to be. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, right? So what we encourage everybody is to market themselves and make sure they have a great profile on LinkedIn. Make sure your resume yep. does not differ from what's out on LinkedIn. Yes. Right? Can't agree with that more, Mike. <laughs> Instant flag. Yeah. Amen to that one, Mike. <laughs> yes, that was a good one. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you guys right. so much. Thank you, Nikki and Tech Hub. Thank you, yes, Eric. Thank you, Have a great weekend. Bye.